The world's seas are much larger, more powerful, and more beautiful than man or anything he can dream to create. To those who have seen it, the sea appears to go on and on and never end, which in turn parallels man's endless struggle to not give in to death. Ernest Hemingway was aware of this when writing The Old Man in the Sea, and made an example of the struggle through his main character Santiago. From a man who devoted much of his life as an outdoorsman, especially a fisherman, Hemingway had a first-hand experience as a man trying to find his place in nature. Therefore, he easily translated it into his novel. The sea is the perfect setting because it stands for all of life on which man must sail. In both the sea and in life, there are a number of possibilities that lie hidden from the naked eye. These hidden possibilities may be treasures, such as the marlin, or problems, such as the sharks. Neither will be found unless man embarks upon the journey in the first place. If man is lucky enough to discover a treasure, such as love or family or education, he must fight until death to retain it. But if a man is unlucky enough to discover a problematic conflict lurking underneath the surface of the sea of life, such as any one of life's varied problems, he must fight it bravely and nobly until the end. In either case, it is the struggle that is most important, and a man obtains the status of a hero if he battles this sea of life with pride and holds nothing back. In the novel, Santiago embarks on a sea journey and encounters a giant marlin. He battles nobly to earn the treasure of the giant marlin and then fights the sharks to save it. The struggle defines him as a hero. Even though he loses the marlin to the sharks, he has won the battle with the sea. Alright, we are looking for an individual's perspective on the, uh, the uh, representation of the sharks in the old man in the sea. Uh, oh, here's a man. Let's, let's ask this man. Sir, sir, well, what do you think about the uh, representation of the sharks in The Old Man in the Sea? Oh, The Old Man in the Sea by Ernest Hemingway? Uh, yes, yes, that one. Oh, well, from a biographical point of view, I think that the sharks represent the literary critics that chastise Hemingway's work during his drought in his work. Um, just like Santiago's 84 days of not catching any fish, Hemingway is really trying to express his point that no matter what man tries to do, there will always be some type of opposition out to stop you from reaching that goal. Really? That's brilliant. Thank you, sir. I, I really must be going. All right, on your way. Wow, Springfield, Illinois is a remarkable place. Let's continue. Just as the huge marlin represents the treasures of life to Santiago, the sharks represent all things that fight against man in his quest for his treasure. As opponents of the old man, the sharks stand in bold contrast to the marlin, which is obviously worthy of Santiago's effort and strength. They symbolize and embody the destructive laws of the universe and attest to the fact that those laws can be transcended only when equals fight to the death. Because Hemingway classifies them as nothing but base present predators, and not equals to the old man, Santiago wins no glory from battling them. Some may say that Santiago gained nothing from the experience, such as the tourist woman from the end of the story, who only saw this skeleton as trash waiting to go out with the tide. But, because he exhausted himself in fending off the negative forces that were the sharks, he earned every right of glory and praise that he received from the little boy and other fishermen. Each of the symbols employed by Hemingway adds to the basic theme that life is an endless struggle with whimsical rewards. In order to gain nobility in life, a person must show bravery, confidence, courage, patience, optimism, and intelligence during the struggle. Then, even if the prize is lost, the person has still won the battle, proving himself capable of maintaining pride under pressure, the ultimate test of mankind. Join us next week on the History Channel for a much less interesting and slightly less in-depth analysis of Kate Chopin's The Awakening.